Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka welcoming you to another half hour of Rural Heritage where we bring you stories of people borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For the next couple of weeks we're going to be in Medford, Wisconsin where Jason and Katrina Julian hosted the American Brabant Association Rendezvous at their dairy farm. The ABA is a relatively new registry and in essence is made up of horses with at least 25% European Belgian bloodlines with the remainder being made up from American Belgians or Percheron breeding. Next week's show will feature a presentation by Jason about the development of the registry and what it hopes to accomplish in terms of establishing a superior workhorse for the fields and forests. This week's show focuses on the other activities that went on during the two-day event. ABA board members and others brought their American Brabants and put them to work in the fields, plowing and disking, as well as chopping corn and raking and baling hay. They also participated in an obstacle course designed to mimic a trip to town from the farm, and of course hauled people around from one venue to another. There's a lot to see, so don't go away. We'll be right back. It's almost time to put up a new calendar. Make yours a draft horse calendar featuring a couple dozen photos of draft horses at work, show, and play. We've been making these calendars for over 40 years and guarantee your satisfaction. They cost only $16.95 each or two for $30. Shipping charges included. Just call 877-647-2452 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. We are at the Julian Farm in uh, Medford, Wisconsin, and we are hosting, they are hosting our 2021 American Bourbon Association Rendezvous. And basically, it's a educational and fun get together. We want to invite the public to learn more about our breed, uh, get up close and personal with them, and see some of the different things they do and basically uh, what good horses they can be for field and forestry work and what they're bred for. The Breed Association started in the, I believe it was 1970, sometime in the early 70s. And uh, we fired it back up again. It kind of was a quiet association. We, um, we, got, to, we got it started again in 2011 or 12. We became more active, started having monthly meetings, and um, put put our brains together on where we really wanted to go with these horses. And so then we started working actually towards a registry for these horses, which we started in May of 2018. So, and that's where we are right now. We have, uh, the last count, we had 400 horses, give or take a few, registered in our registry. And these would be, uh, percentage horses from 25 to 100 percent and it also includes approved uh, mares for breeding. The animals registered like you say they, they range anything from a uh, hundred percent European Brabant Belgian yes. to something that is uh, 50 percent? 50 percent to 25 percent. Okay. Um, or that little stallion who's running the treadmill is a 25 percent verified European Belgian in him. So it's, it's based on what the owners can verify. If you have evidence or a breeder's affidavit saying that, yes, my European Belgian stallion bred this mare and produced this foal, then we can use that information to register. Yes, Ooh. yes. This, this one here, his, his mother is a sorrel American Belgian. And this one here, his mom was a cross uh, off the PMU farms in Canada and their sire was a 100% import from Belgium. 
what are the um, approved um, crosses that you can um, use with the uh, European Brabant for the um, American Brabant Registry. Is per it Percherins and yeah. Belgians? Percherins and Belgians in Suffolk. Um, we are accepted, at, but basically we keep it, it's a case-by-case case, uh, basis. Okay. So, we don't, ex on, we, uh, we don't uh, accept any light horse crosses because we want to make sure we keep the bone in the hoof and, uh, and the bolt that we want. And we don't accept Clydes and Shires because we're trying to get away from the feathering. Like the European um, Belgians are so heavy feathered these days and we suspect feathers are a cause for some of their leg issues. If not CPL, then certainly for scratches and other types of dermatitis that they get down there. How has the American Brabant um, been received, do you think, by people? Uh, my personal opinion is I see it as 50-50 because there are people looking for these types of horses that are easygoing, work horses, good-minded. Uh, you can see by this gate here, we're not getting anywhere quickly. So, um, that's how that's how I've taken it when when I even my, amongst my friends I've got friends that say, oh they go too slow for me but um, I think we're doing okay I know the CPL scares people but we don't want to scare people we just want people to know you see this beautiful horse with these beautiful feathers but but there might be something secret under there that you're gonna want to know about and if we get more people aware of that then maybe we can work more towards breeding it out. There are degrees of it. Right, that's my, what I mean. Yeah, so uh, it's, for anybody who deals with um, full-blown CPL, it's terribly, it's hard for me to see horses like that. You know they're not comfortable. It's high maintenance. It's, it's just not a fun thing to deal with. And it reduces their health, reduces their workability, reduces, reduces their lifespan. Like I explained before, the sire of these two died at 15 from him. So uh -huh. we really want to see it go bye-bye. And the other thing is, is that with other breeders out there, I mean, it could find its way into the other breeds. Right. We do know that Bertrands and American Belgians are not free of it. They don't have it to the extent that anything with European Belgian in it seems to have. But if they're not careful, they're going to run into the same issues. That's my opinion. So, but I just like to see my horses comfortable. Right. If they're comfortable, they work better. Right. And there are people they just don't want to talk about it. They, um, for whatever reason. Sure. But in, with what we as a board are trying to do includes education. And, and that's part of it. Get your head out of the sand. You betcha. Yeah. It's, it's no different with other breeds who have different uh, different issues. German Shepherds with hip dysplasia. Sure. Um, Dalmatians with deafness. So all things that is important if you're a breeder to be aware of. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is Fieldwork, showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. Dave Myers from Maryville, Missouri. We belong to the Southwest Iowa 
Draft Horse Mule Club chapter simply because we're just 20 miles over the Iowa-Missouri border, and that's just a closer than the Missouri Draft Horse Mule chapter for us. And um, so you've got Brabants? Got American Brabants, yes, yep, I do. Yep. Are you a board member? I am a board member. I thought member. so. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And um, you brought with you from Missouri your horses, but you also brought the obstacle course. Brought the obstacle course from the Southwest Iowa Draft Horse Mule Club. They're, I brought their obstacle course. And describe to me what that obstacle course is based on. Okay, it's based on a trip to town. We start out, we start out, you're ready to go to town, but you have left your wagon in the corn crib or the alleyway of the barn. So we've got a couple of poles there that kind of, and you have to back down between the poles and hook up your team. Then you're going to town. Your first obstacle as you head into town is you got to open a gate to get out on the road. And here, we ask the driver to get off, open the gate, voice command his horses through the gate, voice command his horses to stop, close the gate and get back on the wagon. Then our second obstacle is he's crossing the bridge, which we've got that indicated by some plywood. He has to walk across some plywood. Then you're in town. So your first obstacle, your first stop in town is you've got to go to the grain elevator and pick up some chicken feet or whatever you're going to pick up. And you have to back up and you stop on two pieces of 2 by 12 Both tires have to stop on the 2 by 12 If you back over them, you've backed into the elevator, or if you get only one tire on, you've missed your, your elevator spot. And so after you leave the elevator, you have a stop at the Mercantile Exchange. And, and the only place left to park is to parallel park right, right in front of the Mercantile Exchange. And there you have to back in and parallel park. Then after you parallel park, left the Mercantile Exchange, you're going home a different route. Your first crossing is you have to cross the railroad crossing, and then you've got a low water crossing, which we've indicated by putting up some a tarp, and you just have to walk across the tarp, and then back to your where you started from, you're back home. On that gate that you open and close, um, you got somebody up on the wagon for safety sake. For safety. We just do that all, the, no matter where we're at, we just do that for safety. In case your horses don't stop, you got someone there that can stop them. Or if they won't start, you can, you know, if it's the first time the team has been out, maybe they're not the, quite that well. So we can start them. And, and we don't get too involved with it. If you if you complete the course, it's a good deal for us. Yeah. yeah. We're developing a horse type. We're, work, we're developing an old American workhorse is what we're developing. And we're trying to develop a horse that will work all day. And, and just like our, our logo kind of says, a horse that'll work as hard as you do. That's what we're trying to develop. And we're not specifically just concentrating on one particular breed. We started out with the European Belgian crossed with an American Belgian to come up with American Brabant. But now we're kind of seeing we need to open this up. We're putting some Perchin horses in there. We're putting some Morgan horses in there. We're putting some horses in there that are the phenotype of the type horse that we want. And I think we'll see that open up maybe even a little more in the future, simply because we're after a type of horse more so than a breed of horse. And that type of horse, describe to me what that is. Well, it's just one with good conformation, with a good shoulder set for a collar, and one that'll one with an attitude to work that will we'll go out and work all day. And we need, a, we need a calm horse. We need a horse that will, when we say stop, we need him to stand. And if he needs to stand for 30 minutes, he needs to stand for 30 minutes. He just needs to be calm enough to do what we need to do. And there are breeds that have that kind of a disposition, but certainly the Brabant breed definitely has that yes, disposition. That's, and well, that's where we started out with European Belgium because it had that disposition. That was one of the traits we picked out of there that we really wanted to emphasize. But and then and then one of the um, criticisms or concerns people have with the Brabants watching them work is that they that they tend to be a little bit slow and you're actually to work all day you kind of want a horse that'll step out a little sure bit you too do. and that's one of the reasons we're crossing them with the American Belgian with the Pertuan horse with the Suffolk we are trying to get that attitude that we can work and work all day and we to my opinion the the full-blooded European Belgian is a little lethargic He's just extremely slow. He can work all day, but you know, plan on getting a lot of work done in that day. Where you cross him with the American Belgian, which has a little more firepower, then you got a horse that's got the disposition, the attitude of the European Belgian, but the work, 
firepower of the American belt. So that's, well, I see that opening up, like I say, getting to different breeds that we can incorporate in there. If we can find the type of horse we want, there's some of them still out there. The Amish have kind of, some of those have got a, a workhorse that will work. And so we're trying to incorporate some of that into our breed. Well, I've got three nine-year-old Blue Roans. Kate is on the left, Bess in the middle, on the middle left. Izzy on the middle right, they're half sisters out of the same stud. And Tweed is Bess's four-year-old daughter out of our own stud, Samson. So I've got uh, my four mares, two are pregnant. Kate is bred to a Blue Roan stud doing May. And Izzy is bred back to our own stud, a Bay Roan stud doing late May. And Kate is the is 100% imported. We imported, we didn't import her, we bought her when she was five. And, uh, basically broke her from there. She'd never had a whole lot of work done, so. The rural American countryside is still filled with historic old barns built a century or more ago, but they won't be standing forever. To commemorate and capture the images and stories of the old barns, Ohio native Bob Kruger began painting and writing their histories, and that's all come together in a new book called Historic Barns of Ohio. You can get your copy by calling 877-647-2452 or visiting ruralheritage.com. It costs just $23.99 plus $7 shipping. Call 877-647-2452. West Lufer. I'm from southwestern Wyoming. And um, what do you do out there? I ranch, uh, raise some beef cattle, um, 200, it varies from year to year, but 200, 225 cows on a good year. And that's pretty much what I do. And you put up a lot of hay? I do. We, do, we try and figure two ton of hay per cow get through a winter and some years I use less some more but that's what I try and shoot for and you do most of that work with horses and mules yep an awful mostly lot horses of, now yeah well I, I'm still using two two teams of mules oh yeah okay um but the one team's aged a little and I gave them more time off okay. use a lot more young horses and one of the things that you do is you mow with a trailer mower yes. um uh, uh, uh I and J um trailer mower uh, yes. with a motorized yeah, I've got two of them actually. I've got a seven foot and a nine foot. Um, and I do use the McCormicks too. When I've got enough Teamsters, I'll, I'll put them in the field or if the conditions are better for the McCormick. And, um, so it, it varies, but I mostly use the INJs. They're, they're a higher production by a long shot. Just from standpoint of nine foot bar and a seven foot bar and less drag. It wears my teams out a whole lot less. And you put up how many cuttings? Is it uh, just one cutting? Yeah. Uh, but I'll put up somewhere around uh, on a good year, twelve hundred ton of hay. Um, I've put up as much as fifteen hundred ton. Uh, this year is probably more like seven hundred ton of hay. And this is mostly round bales. Yeah, round bales, loose hay, a little bit of square bales. I kind of vary it. And I did cut a bunch, and uh, I had a guy come in and custom bale some three by three bales for me. Well, actually, they, they, they wanted me to judge the, the, the halter class for, for the Brabant, American Brabant. And uh, I also wanted to come back and look at breeding options, um, see some demonstrations, and network with people. You know, I, I've got some, some Brabant cross horses now that I'm using, and I kind of looking down the road at breeding options, too. You like them? I like them. The ones lot. you have? Yep. They're a good horse. I mean, they're... Uh, we talk about the right size of horse, uh, and I believe that's true. I, uh, much more than 16 hands is not too useful for me. And so the Brabants that you have, they move along pretty good? They do. They've got a really good uh, flat walk. And, and mostly, you know, I've had a horse with a lot of action, some horse that want to jog or trot, and that's, that's good for a day, maybe two. But uh, throughout the season, that horse with a good level, three and a half, four mile an hour walk, he's just gonna last, he's gonna get more done, uh, not wear himself out, not sore himself up. And 
It's just really efficient. And these horses are that, especially with the cross. You mow hay, mm -hmm. you rake it into windrows, yep. and then you bale it with a square baler. Yep. Is that custom baling then? Do you have somebody come no, in with a I, tractor? I've or you... got an old, I, I have a guy custom bale the three by threes. I do put some loose hay up too. Okay. Um, so that's with a buck rake yeah, buck and a uh, uh, overshot I or don't something? I have the stacker put together. Ours is worn out. Um, but, and I did, did do use a, uh, uh, an old 1971 tractor with a, um, a farmhand loader and they, okay. they had an ex, uh, a loose hay attachment for them. Right, right. I've seen those. And, yeah. and it still works and it's good. I can yeah. work on it. <laughs> but How much rain do you guys get a year? Very little. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a rainy summer and I, uh, late summer and it put me behind hand. I was lucky to get here. Um, probably two and a half inches this summer in various little storms. Little storms meaning under quarter inch. These guys would laugh at it. <laughs> you rake the hay with the horses? A lot of it. Not yeah. always. I mean, I, th I will throw a tractor in and catch up. Yeah, and, right. And that's the kind of the mixed power thing. It's too important. It is. You got to get it done when you can. But we rake, and I've got two side delivery rakes. I've got two sulky rakes to dump rake and I've got a V rake and when we're using horses with that I've got a hand pump to pick it up put it down but and that V rake's a game changer you put three or four head on that thing you can rake 40 acres of hay and pretty quick yeah right I bet mm -hmm. your ground is relatively flat it where is. you make hay uh -huh. it is. Um, you know and it's a lot of mine is old river bottoms um, and and out there they weren't really plowed leveled anything like that. So you're gonna see a lot of swales and things, kind of a challenge for some of that hand equipment. And we beat it up pretty hard. Uh, the horses tend to be more gentle on that stuff. You know, a tractor's got no give and you don't feel it so much. Okay, so this is our six-year-old stallion and um, our kids, they have a, a egg business wherever they um, sell eggs to their various clients and we raise whole corn. So we pick all of our corn and we keep it in a corn crib and then they get it out and they run it through the grinder while the horse runs the treadmill. So it is really efficient process and it, it also keeps our horses in shape. We've had two year, two year olds on it. We've had old horses on it. I mean, anything will go right up on it. Um, now some people don't even put the ramp on it and the horses get used to, you know, loading on it just like they would any, a, a trailer. Right. But um, he doesn't like backing off of a steep slope. So sure. we build a ramp uh -huh. and it's easier for two year olds and to train them. But yeah, it works really good. We, That's we really an Athens it. Enterprise. It is. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and we bought it about a year ago. And the mill, where did you get that from? Um, that's an old mill that run off of a tractor. And that's an interesting situation too, because it, it only goes counterclockwise. Okay. And all of your tractors are clockwise. Right, right. So we're like, oh, what are we going to do here? But the Athens treadmill, they, they will put on a counterclockwise rotation and a clockwise. So we can run any implement now. So it, it's really neat. It's very efficient and it works really good. So. That's a good company, isn't it? It is. Athens. It is. I think it's, it was getting harder to get it, um, to get one of them ordered. I just think that they moved from Kentucky to Tennessee and they're right. kind of slacking off that, that end of it. Right. But um, I hope they continue to, to manufacture them because they are a very, very nice product. Yeah, they seem like their business is kind of pushing towards Wildcat gearing um, yes. more than they are with the, the treadmill. Yeah, because this is one of the last ones they said they, they were going to build. Oh, really? And I'm like, I hope this isn't the last one because it's yeah. so nice, you know, yeah. it's, it's good. Especially because um, we keep our horses in whenever we're working on Thanks for joining us today for another episode of Rural Heritage, where we bring you stories of people borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.